Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is the last episode of our DIY Miniatures House, Lisa Taylor's Room. Uh, it's a little longer just because I wanted to get it all in, in one episode with putting some windows together and putting everything into this room. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. And as always, if you like everything, please like, subscribe, share, and uh, leave a comment. So let's get going. start putting everything together so these are the uh, the wooden walls that I originally got and instead of painting with a brush and everything I just actually use spray paint uh, to go over them front and back it's just a lot easier it's more smoother that way and it just takes less time to get done and all that so um, and then the inventory sheet that you get it has all the lines for placing things on certain pieces. I went ahead and uh, marked lines of where some of these pieces are going to go and everything. So, so this is pretty much one of the walls. We're going to be putting some, some like framing on it and everything. So, take too much. those in, line the walls up.
right, everyone. Looks like we're going to be doing some windows. So, so here, these are the frames for the windows. Here's these. These are actual paper cutouts. And you can't really see them, which I think I missed one. Oh, there. You can't really see them, but there's little plastic pieces I cut out to the size. And uh, instead of having two of the wooden windows to put inside of the plastic, they just went ahead and just gave you paper to put over top of it um, to go like on the inside of the, the wall and everything. But uh, I mean, it works either way, but you just gotta be careful on how you, how you glue it in and everything. But the, when you cut it, the plastic piece should fit just a little bigger than the opening and everything. So you really gotta be careful to make sure you don't put too much glue down to where it shows through the window. You may actually use a use a toothpick to kind of spread the glue uh, around a little bit so it doesn't get uh, smeared too much. So, but uh, with the plastic, it was just measuring it and then just getting a straight edge on that line and then just just cutting it down. Just to make sure it was straight, so do pick to kind of spread it. I mean, it's plastic, so it's not gonna. It's not like it needs a lot to to hold it or anything. But you just gotta be careful with the uh, the glue strings. Just get those out of the way because you don't want those on the plastic or anything. So. this around too much so you're, you're gonna get it to smear so you're definitely gonna wanna just make sure it fits right where you are want it to go. So if you really want you can always just push it down just to get it all to stick. So now what they want you to do, it's a small one, right? Is uh, you're just putting this little frame on the outside where you just put the glue on or the frame just so you don't really see the window too much. A little bit there. Okay. Kind of the same, don't want to move it around too much, but you just want to just get this on here. Because I mean, it's going to be inside of a window, so you're really not going to see it too much, but so, but that's it though. Okay, so I got the windows done. Right here, so with this one, the bigger one, it actually fits in the frame kind of loosely. So I am just going to just put some glue all along the edging. So right now, I'm just going to just coat it with as much glue as I can. So it's not going to leak. I'm just gonna let it stick to my hand. I'm just gonna let it sit there and then I am just gonna drop this in here. And just push it down. And then I'm just gonna leave it. And I'm hoping that the glue actually uh, gets it to stick and everything. So, because it's supposed to be just flat. So, with this one. I want these to just kind of stick. 
stick out a little bit. Not completely closed, but just a little open. So you want it just a little bit open. So, but that's it for that one. So, all right, everyone. Looks like we're gonna be putting in these windows and doing some framing around it. Kind of lowered the camera just so we get a little bit better view, so not too far away. So, hopefully this works. It's even on both sides. Because you can either do put glue around the frame if you want, or glue inside the frame on this one. I'm trying to think which would be. It's just it'd be hard to hold this if you are got all the glue around it trying to push it in. a little warped so you may not get it perfectly straight but just as long as it's inside the frame itself then uh, it should be fine okay. and this one it don't really matter but you want to put the, the the side that you put the paper template on you want to keep that on the inside as well that's what you did for the other one. I don't want to put too much in. But I'm just trying to get it to stay for now until I get the top piece on to And if it's just a little off, it don't have to be perfect. You know, perfectly centered with the other two. But as long as it's close, that's all I'd be looking for. I'm mostly wanting to cover up the gaps, you know, for the window. So I'm okay if it's just a little off. 
and you can always adjust the top to be even and everything. So, all right, kind of push it over to line it up. And I think we are good. There we go. this in a little bit, sticking out. Just gonna hold it for a little bit. Some of these are a little curved. There we go. All right, there we go. Just gonna put it right there. And just kind of line it up. step. It looks like we're going to be working on a curtain and a couple hangers to, to hang a couple things from. So I already did one just to have you see what it looks like. So kind of looks like that. So, but I wanted to go ahead and Go through the whole process just to show you how I show you how I do it. So just a thin middle wire. I just take one end. No, that's right. Just take the one end and then just bend it up. Start pushing down. Pulling it down. Like so. And if one's just a little bigger curled and bigger than the other one, that's totally fine. Because if you try to make it any smaller, you may end up shorten it so so that's totally fine but then you want to go ahead and squeeze this whole thing together as best you can and this wire isn't really too thick so it's a little bit more pliable and then I'm just going to grab the end of it and then just bend it up so I make kind of like an L, and then I just come back through and just straighten the ears a little bit. And if you want to raise it up a little bit more, you can. But oh, there you go. So there's a little ears, a little hanger. I'm just putting a little dab on there because I'm not going to do too much. But so what I'm going to do is go up around the thing in between the loops and then I'm going to curl it around the actual hanger part to lock it in. So it's going to be kind of hanging, and then we'll probably uh, glue this to the wall too, so it doesn't go anywhere. Make it looks like it's coming off the hanger, but 
we'll leave it like that for now and just let it dry and then we'll uh, press on with uh, making this curtain. Okay, so for the curtain, it wants us to make a little fold like you normally see in curtains just so we can get the metal bar through. So I'm gonna just just kind of put a little bit of white glue on the edge right here. And then just get like a toothpick, just kind of smooth it out so it's not too lumpy. centimeters really but but all you want to do is just glue the edge down and leave a little little hole there for the for the rod going through put a little bit a little bit on it I'm just kind of smooth it as you can, not too far though. on the other side that's probably totally fine too you just want to get a little edge in like that not too bad okay so what they want you to do is with the the wire measure out the distance and then bend one end of it as a, in a curve to go down and then and then have it go through And then go ahead and bend the curve on the other end. I want you to mark it. And everything, but it's up to you on how you want to do it. You just want to make sure it's over the hole. Measure the, so you get the wire, you measure the distance in between, you can mark it both ends if you want just so you know where you need to bend. You bend the one side and then uh, with the other side being straight go ahead and insert it you know into the hole of the curtain at the top all the way through and then when it gets to the other side if you made a mark go ahead and bend that down and then look to see if you know they're the same, same length facing the same way and then uh, you can always test it out to see if they're the right length Test it out to make sure it's going to fit in the holes. Won't be any issues. 
and then if you have you know something underneath it to cover both holes then when this sits down into it then it'll sit straight up you know at a good distance however you want and you can cut these ends off more if you want this if you want the rod or the wire closer to the window you know the curtain and everything so is it wants us to it wants us to tie up the curtain so and it wanted us to use a uh, the, uh, the the brown rope the khaki rope with it but since I didn't really use uh, any of the red rope I figured I was just gonna use the red rope to to tie it up so what I did was I just tied the red rope around it just put some glue on it so it wasn't gonna go anywhere then I just used the ends just kind of twist them a little bit you can do whatever you want with it but then uh, you know the curtain can be however you want it don't have to be perfect certain way or whatever but just as long as it looks like a curtain down the holes go down as far as I can so you may see that uh, I don't have the curtains in there no more and uh, they are a different color so uh, I didn't like how it was looking and uh, I know I cut the measurement out correctly for the curtains but they were way too short uh, you know that's something that you can do with any of these models is if you don't like the way something looks or whatever if you see something better definitely um, you know change it up so I was just kind of going through the process of uh, just seeing how it would look and what I was wanting to do and, but the curtains were way too small and uh, it was not gonna look good at all not at all so uh, so I just uh, before the glue dried on the bar I uh, just took it off and uh, just did up some new curtains um, didn't have too much fabric left but uh, I think this one was gonna look a little bit better I'm gonna let it dry for a second and then while that does that and then we'll go into it we'll go back to our Little flyers, bouquet, and hanger that we did earlier. Okay. So let's see if we can get this to hold. Did not want that to happen. There we go. We should let those sit right there for a second. See if they will stay. There we go. I'm happy with that. Like I said, there wasn't a curtain there. All right. So now we're going to be doing one of my least likely things to do, which is uh, electric, <laughs> electrical, uh, pretty much working on the light source that uh, goes into the room. So it gives you some, some wires to use and gives you some tubing and a little light source right here they got. So we're going to be hooking or trying to hook everything up. The LED lamp. That they give you it has two little prongs that's what you're gonna be hooking the wires to right here you have it uh, you cut it off at a certain length just so you can wipe wrap the wires around it 
and then you want to make sure it's at the a certain position and then inside it has a little triangle shape that the picture shows and everything so with this one just gonna get the wire. You can use some wires here, and you're just gonna wrap it around. between the wire and the poles, everything, okay. Now, they want you to test it to make sure that you get it hooked up right, so these are the batteries that we're gonna be using uh, for the, uh, to turn it off and on and everything. So what we can do is, hook one to one side and then hook one to the other side and as you can see, it lights up. So you know you, you know you got it together, right? So okay. So with that, we got these shrinkable tube that we have that we're gonna kind of shrink or melt down. So you just start at the end of the wire, have it go down. This is just to make sure that it doesn't, uh, the wire doesn't come off or anything. And you just kind of push it over top of that, make sure it goes all the way down. And then you do the same for the white. Just bend the wire up. And then you just push it till it goes all the way down. Okay, so to melt it, you want to get yourself either a lighter or something that produces a flame. Now you just use a, one of these right here, and then you just don't want you don't want to get too close. Kind of move everything out of the way, and but you just want to get close enough where you can see it melt. So usually just putting underneath it, cause it to melt, and you can actually see it. shrink down and you probably can't see it but it definitely uh, shrunk down you can see the little divots of the, the wire and everything but it's pretty much made to shrink down so the wires don't come loose and everything and right below it you don't want any of the black showing whatsoever so you want to try to push this all the way up as best you can and then as straight as possible. If you need to use some pliers or something, you can rubber off or whatever, but this is what you're looking for. Is it where the light source is right on top of it? And then, what you're wanting to do, uh, made the, this little cover, and it was the same uh, steps that we used to make that hat where we cut it. Uh, we glued a little uh, white template on top and then we just folded it in and curved it uh, to get the shape just like we did it with the hat and everything and I uh, just cut a hole in the middle so now what we're going to do is have the wires go all the way through where this is you want this light source to be right on the right bottom so you want the black rubber to go through it and everything so and then with that 
Then you want some more shrinkable tube. to go pretty much all the way down to where the other one is and then shrink that down. So there we go. Yep. Okay. So it's on there pretty good, but you just want to make sure it's not moving or anything. Okay, so I'd already done this. This is uh, already painted the outside right here. Already painted this outside piece, both sides of it. I just glued the wooden piece right here, and then I glued a little rivet right here in the middle. And this is where the light, this is where this is going to be going. <laughs> Take the wire. the wire, curl it up, and then fold it back down, kind of like this, because you're going to be putting it into the, the hole, like that, and you want the wires to curl up so it doesn't uh, get in the way or anything like that, so, so I'm going to put a lot of glue in there, and then I'm going to just put some around this as well, and then I'm going to make sure that the wires are lined up with this, with the, the ledge right here, and then uh, you just need to hold it to keep it straight and uh, if you have something to put next to it to ensure it stays straight then uh, that's totally fine because it's going to want to go one way or the other and everything and you don't want to go continue on until this lamp is secured yeah. okay so we got everything glued as you can see, it's holding pretty well. Oops, I can't see. So you can see it's holding pretty well. And I glued the wires down right here just to make sure they don't go anywhere. So now what we're going to do is we're going to feed these wires down the corner. Both wires should be able to get back behind here. There we go. And you just want to just push these down and then what we'll eventually do is kind of glue them to the corner there but you just want to glue them down pull as close as you can and then what we're going to do is glue this this up against the railing as much as possible okay so got the roof on got the wires kind of draped down the corners is where they want you to kind of glue it down just to get it out of the way because we'll probably put something in the corner where you won't even hardly see it and I just have this here to hold the wires down for now if not as you see they just go all over the place so so I just kind of pull them a little tight and then I just use something to weigh them down just so I'm not trying to hold the wires with one hand and glue and then everything else so I just throw in some drops here and there not too too bad but just to 
see if we can get it to hold. And sometimes it might be good just to, in between where you glued it, you can put some more weight to get it to stay. Like I said, we're probably going to be covering it with something where you're not going to be able to see it, but as long as you get it in there close enough, then that's, that's all you're looking for. So we'll let that dry for a little bit and then we'll come back. Okay, so we got the wire glued in pretty good. You see all the way through here. It's not completely set, but it's good enough to hold and everything. So now we're going to be hooking it up to our on and off switch. That's going to be uh, placed on the bottom of the model. So I already got the batteries in and it comes with two screws that you can put in, but I don't put them in because if you need to change the batteries, you have to take the screws out and that's just a pain in the butt. And it's got a little locking uh, tab that keeps the lid on so you really don't need to put the screws in. So with these, with the shrink, uh, shrink tubing, they want you to, you know, slide, slide them on here and everything. So we're going to be connecting these with our end pieces. End pieces over here. And I like to test it. Okay, it's in the arm. Black on that one. White on that one. That one is done. Oh, there we go. So I got a good connection. So yellow to red. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off. So it's always good to test it just to make sure you know uh, which one's going where. So now normally when you do wires, you hook it like this and twist it that way, but it ain't going to work this time just because of the tubing. And once you get the tubing on, it, it isn't going to go anywhere. So um, you can kind of just hold it. And then just kind of wrap it around it, but and the light still works, so we are good. As long as you get them in there tight, and they ain't gonna go anywhere. Okay, so with that. says is to put it upside down here and these wires will just stay underneath it all right so we got the battery pack in got the cord stowed uh, the next part was putting this floor down so you had the little paper template with the wood that you just glue down down to the the wood piece that fits it and then you just glued it down on the on the edges which is what I did and then I just put some weight on top of it to make sure that it stayed because it was a little warped, not too bad, but I just put weight down on all four sides just to make sure it didn't, make sure it didn't come back up or anything like that. So, so now we're gonna be uh, working on more trim on the, on the sides right here. And originally, after I painted it uh, on the template inventory sheet, I drew some lines here, here, and there's one here, just to show, uh, so you know exactly where the uh, these trim pieces are gonna go. Got my fingers stuck again. All right, so we just we're just kind of lining it up with the other trim piece that's there. It's bowing a little bit, so I'm just gonna just gonna push it in the middle here. Hold it for a few seconds. It doesn't go all the way up to the top, so I'm just gonna kind of push it up there a little bit. No, I'm actually. <laughs> but then I'm also gonna put some on the on the floor here, just to make sure it holds.
just gonna go kind of right up here. Okay, there was just one last step we needed to do before uh, assembling everything. So uh, I just went ahead and just did this one offline. But uh, these right here are just little patterns. Uh, put a hook on the beam right here. And uh, these were just cardboard uh, patterns that you could cut out, different shapes and everything. And then what they wanted you to do was just get a, a needle and thread. Um, you know, if you ain't left over red from what they provided you, which I used it all for the bobbins and everything, but if you can find some red thread and a needle, then you just go through each of the patterns or make a knot at the end of it. And then I uh, just poke it through each of the patterns, uh, different spots or whatever. It doesn't really matter where, but just so we get a nice little grouping like this. And then you tie another knot at the other end of it, once you cut off a little bit. And then uh, I just put some glue on the top and then just wrapped it around a couple times to get it to stay and everything. And then I just left this little red uh, string just hanging down and everything. Okay, so the first thing is the very first thing we built. So I'm just gonna fit it to this, the back back here and the wire is kinda in the way. So it may not go all the way to the wall, but just kinda put it there. And that's what I was saying up here, the little crank on the uh, coffee maker. That's what I was saying about not making sure it doesn't go any further back than the cabinet itself, because if it went too far back, then we wouldn't be able to use it. So you'd either have to move it to the side or move it forward. So that looks like it's actually fitting pretty good. So I'm going to glue. Okay. So since I got the glue on the bottom, I really don't want to move it too much except for right where it's going to be. Just going to push it down, push it back. Make sure I don't bend anything. I know that light's going to get hit a lot. Okay. I'm trying not to drop it. it down just to get it to stay okay so I'm trying to put this down Where? create too much issue Sure, it's just even on both sides. Just try to, you know, place the items first before I put glue on it just to make sure it all fits. 
but it sucks trying to take it off with the glue. ball of yarn right there all right and there we go we are completely done with our DIY miniature house Lisa's Taylor so now taking it for a little close-up and uh, show you, you know, see if you can get a little closer on some of the details and everything. Show you around. Oh, okay. So, we go in at our size, got our little boxes that we did, the ball of yarn, got our pillows, the rolls of fabric we had on there, got another box with fabric inside and some yarn some rolls of yarn back there so I mean this is a, a yarn room so or fabric so it's gonna have tons of fabric and everything so got the ironing board ironing leg up in here got the hat that we did newspaper got the uh, patterns built up up there got the calendar coffee maker and picture up there on the top. Got some flowers hanging on the wall. Got, of course got the light hanging up, which I'll uh, turn on here in a second. We got our cabinet stocked. Some fabric. There's another we got a sewing machine. Got a chair back there that we did. And the cabinet with all the drawers. And we got a little working table, we got a little plant there on top, we got some scissors, we got our flowers, we got our book, we got a little bobs of yarn, <clears throat> measuring tools, our curtain that I redid because I didn't like the way the uh, other one was, some little pictures and just other stuff on the wall, and uh, a little mannequin, we got a little stool. And the other pillows. So I enjoyed this. It worked out pretty well. You got the lantern, you got the trellis on top up there. So turn around here. And again, of course the walls and the and the bottom part right here. I uh, it gives you paint to <clears throat> paint it with a brush and everything, but I actually spray painted it because it's just, like I said before, it's just a lot easier, quicker. Uh, there's the window we put on, you know, with the railing that's, you know, cardboard, but there's that. Uh, but yeah, just spray paint it to me it was just a lot easier uh, and everything. So that one, we got the windows just a little bit open. But there you go. And Lisa's Taylor's room thing, so that's how it looks with the light on. So actually looks pretty cool 
So, so the batteries don't last too long. So it's definitely not meant to stay on for, for a long period of time or anything, but um, but it still looks pretty cool with the light, you know, kind of see everything and all that. So, no, so this, this will do it for this uh, DIY miniature house, Lisa's Taylor's room. So I appreciate you guys watching, being patient with me. And uh, I said, this is my first time uh, recording, doing this type of model and everything. So I hope you enjoyed it. You know, it's a different type of model that I do out of the, the other ones, you know, that I enjoy doing as well. But, um, but uh, I, I definitely enjoyed this. So I hope you, hope you did too. Get some uh, insights or some, uh, some hints or whatever, you know, if you decide to work on one or whatever. Um, but definitely, um, you know, if you like the video, please like, share, leave a comment. You know, if you have any questions, please let me know. Be more than glad to, to answer as best as I can. And of course, you know, I'm not an expert uh, at doing these. I'm sure there's other people that uh, could do a better job or has better ideas on doing certain things, but this is just my interpretation. Of, of how I, I put everything together so uh, but just trying to just trying to help out anybody else who's wanting to do this uh, these type of models so with that uh, we'll go ahead and end it uh, but again I appreciate you watching I uh, hope you liked it and uh, we'll see you next episode